In the 1960s, the average farm tractor had 40 to 50 horsepower. That was enough for most operations, enough to pull a plow, run a combine, and get the job done on a typical American farm. But the business was changing. Farms were getting bigger, equipment was getting heavier, and farmers were demanding more power. Toward the end of the decade, horsepower figures were climbing dramatically. The International 806 reached 93 horses. Other manufacturers were pushing similar numbers, but there was a psychological barrier in the industry, a number that seemed almost mythical for a row crop tractor. 100 horsepower. Now there had been exceptions to this barrier before. The big steam tractors of the early 20th century had exceeded it. Gas tractors like the 140 horsepower 1910 Joy McVicar with its massive 3,000 cubic inch four-cylinder engine had blown past it decades earlier. And in 1965, Minneapolis Moline had reached 101 horsepower with the G706. But for International Harvester, the company that had essentially invented the row crop tractor with the original Farmall, breaking that 100 horsepower barrier with a naturally aspirated engine would be a milestone moment. The genie, as they say, was about to come out of the bottle. In 1967, International Harvester introduced the Farmall 856. It arrived as a replacement for the 806 in the Farmall lineup, and it wasn't just a minor update. The engineers in Chicago had given this machine a complete makeover, restyling it to match the rest of the 56 series offerings, while simultaneously beefing up the entire drivetrain to handle something special. That something special was an enlarged six-cylinder diesel displacing 406.9 cubic inches. When the 856 went through Nebraska tractor test number 970, it produced 100.49 horsepower. That made the Farmall 856 the first naturally aspirated Farmall ever to exceed 100 horsepower. No turbochargers, no superchargers, just raw displacement and engineering know-how pushing past that century mark. For International Harvester, this was more than just a number on a spec sheet. This was a statement. The company that had revolutionized American agriculture with the original Farmall back in 1924 was still at the forefront of tractor technology more than four decades later. The late 1960s brought a shift in what farmers expected from their tractors. It wasn't enough anymore to simply have power and reliability. Comfort and convenience were fast becoming major selling factors, and International Harvester understood this perfectly. The 856 came equipped with features that would have seemed luxurious just a few years earlier. An optional tilting steering wheel allowed operators to adjust their driving position. But the real showpiece was the new hydraulic power seat. This wasn't your grandfather's tractor seat. It tilted. It moved up and down. It slid back and forth. Folding armrests completed the package, turning the operator's station into something approaching comfortable. In 1970, International Harvester took things even further with an improved factory cab featuring two doors. For those who preferred open-air operation, a factory-installed rollover protection structure was available. Safety and comfort were no longer afterthoughts in tractor design. International Harvester offered the 856 in multiple configurations to suit different farming operations. You could get it in the traditional tricycle front end, the style that had defined the Farmall brand since its inception. Or you could opt for the wide front axle that was becoming increasingly popular. For specialty crop work, a high clearance version was also available. One notable shift was the move away from gasoline and LP engines, which became optional as diesel emerged as the tractor's primary power plant. The era of gasoline-powered farm equipment was fading and International Harvester was clearly betting on diesel power for its flagship model. The transmission told its own story about the 856's capabilities. When equipped with the optional torque amplifier power shift auxiliary, operators had access to 16 speeds forward and 4 in reverse. That kind of gear selection meant farmers could find exactly the right speed for any task, from heavy tillage work to fast road transport. 
Not every farmer needed all the bells and whistles. Some just wanted reliable power at a lower price point. For these buyers, International Harvester offered the 856 Custom, a stripped-down economy version that delivered the same basic performance without the premium features. The Custom model came with single remote hydraulics instead of multiple outlets. It had single headlights rather than the dual setup on the standard model. The fuel tank was smaller and the air filter was downsized as well. These weren't changes that affected the tractor's fundamental capability, but they did bring the price down to a more accessible level for cost-conscious farmers. This two-tier approach was smart marketing. International Harvester could capture both ends of the market, the farmer who wanted the best of everything and the farmer who just needed a hundred horses to pull his plow. The Farmall 856 didn't exist in a vacuum. The late 1960s were an intensely competitive time in the tractor industry, and every major manufacturer was racing to offer more power, more features, and more value. John Deere had its own entries in this horsepower class. Massey Ferguson was pushing hard. Minneapolis Moline, as mentioned earlier, had actually reached the 100 horsepower mark before International Harvester with naturally aspirated power. The pressure on every manufacturer was immense. What set the 856 apart was the combination of that milestone horsepower figure with the Farmall brand's legendary reputation for row crop versatility. This wasn't just a powerful tractor, it was a powerful Farmall. And that name still carried enormous weight with American farmers who had grown up with the brand. International Harvester produced the Farmall 856 from 1967 to 1971, a four-year production run that saw approximately 25,000 units roll off the assembly line. That's a substantial number, reflecting strong demand from farmers who wanted that combination of proven reliability and breakthrough power. Those 25,000 tractors went to work across America and around the world. They plowed fields, planted crops, and powered a generation of agricultural operations. Many of them are still working today, more than 50 years later, a testament to the robust engineering that International Harvester built into everyone. The 856 also marked something of a transition point for the company. The horsepower race would only intensify in the years that followed. Turbocharged engines would become common. Power figures would climb well beyond what seemed possible in 1967. But the 856 was there at the beginning of that climb, the first naturally aspirated farmall to crack the century mark. Looking back, it's easy to dismiss the 100 horsepower barrier as just a number. After all, 99 horsepower would pull almost as much as 101. But numbers matter in marketing, and they matter to the farmers who buy tractors. Breaking through that psychological barrier told farmers that International Harvester was serious about power, serious about performance, and serious about meeting the demands of modern agriculture. The 856 proved that a naturally aspirated diesel could deliver genuine working power in a row crop configuration. It proved that comfort and capability could coexist in the same machine. And it proved that the Farmall name, which had defined American farming for over four decades, still had plenty of life left in it. For International Harvester, the 856 represented the culmination of everything the company had learned about building farm tractors. The engineering, the manufacturing capability, the understanding of what farmers actually needed, it all came together in this machine. The wonderful Farmall 856 sits at a fascinating point in agricultural history. It arrived just as the old ways of farming were giving way to the new. Small family operations were consolidating into larger enterprises. Manual labor was being replaced by mechanical power, and the tractors themselves were evolving from simple workhorses into sophisticated machines. International Harvester's decision to push past 100 horsepower with a naturally aspirated engine was a bold one. They could have taken the easier path, adding a turbocharger to boost output without the expense of developing a larger engine. Instead, they chose to do it the hard way, with pure displacement and engineering excellence. The result was 25,000 tractors that helped feed a nation. The result was a milestone in agricultural machinery development. And the result was proof that when International Harvester set its mind to breaking a barrier, that barrier didn't stand a chance.